everyone, and welcome to a game Curmudgeon Plays, Dream Quest. Dream Quest is a game that was uh, written by Peter Whalen, um, I'm guessing sometime last year. I've been playing it for a good 6, 8, 10 months or so, uh, whenever I found out about it. On uh, iOS, it's a, typically an iOS application. There is a PC Mac implementation. That's what I'm playing for you here today. Um, it's a direct port, so it's exactly the same as you get on iOS, either iPhone, iPad, you know, any of your iDevices. Um, so what I'm doing here is exactly what you'll see on those those devices. Um, I decided to play this one. I'm, I call myself a game curmudgeon because I typically don't like very many video games. I definitely don't like any of the twitchy, fast, um, dexterity or, or reflex based type games. I like thinky, slow, um, strategy type games. And this one is, is a great one. Uh, I've decided to play this particular game here because uh, when my own in my own uh, searchings on, on YouTube and whatever there are a few plays of this game uh, very very few plays of this game that I can find uh, and the ones that that are there are not typical of what I find when I play this game. Uh, those are like the the ones that are on there are like the successful runs. That's like one percent of all runs. This game is extremely difficult, uh, and I just kind of wanted to to share that that joy with you, uh, if you will. Um, so. I've decided to to start a brand new I, I bought the PC version of this and I thought I'd start a brand new game and, and show you all more how this game goes. The other thing I kind of hope to get out of this is maybe I'll get better at it by talking through what my ideas are for what I'm playing and um, the decks that I'm going for. Uh, on each particular run. I feel like, uh, and I'll probably do at least a few of these videos because I just want to get some more Dream Quest content out there. Um, but I feel like uh, the typical run that I do, I'll, I'll probably do in the, the first one of it, each character will probably only be able to get to one per video. But later, I'll, you know, after I don't have to explain everything about everything I pick up, which I will do the very first time that I see anything. So, if you watch a later one, you you might not understand everything. So, hopefully, hopefully, uh, I'm entertaining enough that somebody might want to watch more than one. Or if you do, and I'll always say which character I'm doing. So, what we're doing here today is I'm going to go ahead and and put in a, a brand new character or a, a new profile. This is just a name I use on lots of websites and stuff. Uh, first off, let me go over the, the screen. Of course, this is the uh, screen when you first come into the game, Dream Quest. So it's, it's a dungeon crawl roguelike, um, uh, similar to NetHack. Uh, in that once you die, you die. It's a, an end of end of the game kind of thing. There's no uh, well, there are ways to do it, but you don't you can't like save your game and reboot and come back to the game. You know, at a at a previous save and continue on and see if you can do better. Um, in, in any case, I would never do that anyways because that's killing all the fun of the game. Uh, I don't subscribe to the fact that I, that it's called a roguelike, mainly because the first time you play the game, you do not have the same 
uh, chance of winning as you do in subsequent playthroughs of the game. The reason being is it has an achievement system for for uh, giving you uh, power ups or level ups to your starting characters. Uh, those, if you click on this button here, it shows you those achievements. Of course, this is a brand new profile, so I have none. Uh, the achievements can be uh, achieved in one of two ways. You can uh, fulfill the the uh, uh, the quest, I guess, for lack of a better word. That the achievement is trying to get you to fulfill. For instance, this one I just randomly clicked on here is deeper and deeper is the name of the achievement, and the the quest is to actually reach the third floor. And if you do so, you unlock the monk class. Um, the other thing you can do, if you'll notice down here, it says value 600 unlock. Um, as you play the game, you will ac acquire uh, achievement points and you can use those achievement points to unlock maybe a really hard achievement that you are not uh, able to get uh, except by unlocking. I tend to avoid that if I possibly can, just because it kind of feels like cheating to me. But some are so insanely difficult that there's no real way to unlock them except to, to do this. Um, and, and I probably will on these plays do a few unlocks. Uh, when you do uh, achieve an achievement or unlock it via the achievement points, you gain something from that achievement for any subsequent play of any character that you run through the dungeon. Uh, this particular achievement that I clicked on, uh, there was a new card that may be available for you to find in the dungeon. This one gives you access to the pickpocket card. And they're all different. Some act give you access to cards. Some give you access to extra gold for your characters. Um, some give you access to extra life for your characters. And others give you access to special talents. And we'll get into that in a little bit as well. Uh, Again, so it is a dungeon crawl. When you play the game, you get to choose... Well, first, you get to choose your difficulty level. When I play this on iOS, I started at Velociraptor, and pretty much that was the only thing I played. But I never... I never really could get through a dungeon. Um, to get through a dungeon means to clear all three floors of the boss. Um, if you clear all three floors, you clear the dungeon and, and in effect win the game. If you are playing at Velociraptor level, at, at at least a Velociraptor level, which is the high level, after you clear the third floor, you actually get to fight another monster called the Lord of destruction or the lord of dreams or something and he's like insanely hard and i've never beat him and i've only actually fought him once so it's not even um i don't know that i'll even ever get to that point again on this uh, new profile uh today uh i'm gonna actually start on this grizzly bear because i actually hope to unlock some of the the base dungeon clear achievements um for you all and i can do it with most of the basic characters i actually cannot do with priest yet but i'll give it a shot <laughs> um anyways uh when you when you choose your uh when you choose to go on your your uh, game here and you click the play button you actually get to choose a class, and, and the typical four dungeon crawly classes are, are, are um, here. You've got, of course, the priest, the thief, the warrior, and the wizard. Um, one of the things I love about this game is 
every one of these classes acts completely different. Uses completely different deck types, deck styles, and different ways of, of doing things. So, we'll, I guess since I'm on Thief here, we'll start with Thief. Thief, I think, I've cleared, cleared Grizzly Bear with Thief several times. Um, it typically... I think likes decks that use a lot of actions over and over um, and I've heard you can do really really strong short decks that are very tight that have no actions in them so you may not know what I mean here but uh, when I say deck you actually play the game with a deck of cards in this case with the thief you start with nine cards if you'll notice Four of them are attack one cards that, when you play them, just do one damage. Uh, two of them are attack two cards, which, when you play them, deal two damage. These cards are actually the same, it's just an attack card. It's just attack one is level one of the attack card, attack two is level two of the attack card. Uh, and it is possible throughout your dungeon experience here to actually. Uh, upgrade an attack one to an attack two or an attack two to an attack three up to a max of attack four uh, also for the thief we have a backstab card which um, does one point of damage plus one for every action card in play well there are many different kinds of cards in the game the red border cards here are attack cards on your turn you can play as many attack cards as you want you can also play, uh, at the beginning of the game, one action card. The action cards are green border cards. I have two green border cards here that are slice cards. They require one action point to play them. So, at the beginning of the game, I have one action point and can play one per turn. What this card does, if you'll notice, it just says deal one damage. Uh, this little sword means actually physical damage and we'll get into other types of damage in a bit uh, and then also you get to draw a card so it's a little more powerful than the attack one cards because it replaces itself but again you can only play one of those per turn uh, and that is shown here if you'll notice this little hourglass has a one under it that's because I can play one action per turn it is possible to up your actions the other things here, if you'll notice, this this right here is the gold. Uh, it is at five. I have five gold as my starting gold for the game. These three tiny stars here are my mana. Um, this is my starting mana when I get into a combat. Uh, the thief starts with zero starting mana when he gets into a combat. If you'll notice, I have no spell cards, so it's not an issue really with Thief. And then the last thing here is actually how many cards I draw per turn in a combat. So of my nine cards, I'll draw two, two of them. So if you'll notice, you can make your deck a lot stronger by getting rid of your weaker cards so that you draw these stronger cards more often. And then when you get to the end of the deck, you just reshuffle and then draw those same strong cards again. Um, on the... Uh, right side here you have I guess your name and a portrait of you this is my little thief guy here uh, and it tells you my level and of course I can click the little book here and bring up my list of uh, my deck it, it tells me how many hit points I have right now uh, this is key you uh, heal up your hit points every time you gain a level so you kinda gotta try to, to figure out when to fight certain types of monsters to gain levels uh, so that you can heal and then here is actually my experience point bar uh, I have zero experience points right now and it takes me two experience points to get to the next level um, e any monster I fight I gain the number of experience points equal to the monster level I believe with bosses it's doubled so I can't 100% confirm that because I've actually never paid attention but I, I, know, I know that most of the time when you kill a boss, you typically gain a level. Not always, so it can't be a, an always gain a level kind of thing. You gain a certain number of experience points, but I believe it's probably double. 
Uh, lastly here, with the thief, you have a special power that is available to you uh, at the beginning of the game. If I use this power, it will go into a cooldown, and I will not be able to use that power until I've fought at least, I think it's five monsters at the beginning of the game. Uh, later, I think there's one of the achievements lowers that starting cooldown to four, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, I always typically do the thief cooldown right away because there's no reason not to because you're going to fight monsters anyways and you might as well uh, see what you get out of that first treasure chest. So the thief special power is to find a treasure. When I click that it puts a treasure chest right under me and then I can click here to open it and see what's inside. And it looks like it's actually a pretty good card I might add to my deck. This one is a storm slash, it's uh, an attack card. So I can play as many during my turn as I want to. And this one deals four damage. Or four lightning damage. Uh, there are also in addition to physical damage, which was the little sword icon, the, there are there is also elemental damage. Uh, earth, air, uh, fire, and water. Uh, lightning damage is of course air damage in this case. And I'll just leave this right now and come back later. Let's just see what my deck looks like before I put anything else into it. Uh, so let's just search around here. If I, if I was in, in damage mode right now, I could click here to go here and get uh, some health. But I try to save those for when I need them. Uh, like I'm not going to, to find an enemy. Uh, so... Here, I'm like in a water type world here, so I'm, I'm gonna float around here, and, and here's a fish, it's a piranha, it's level one. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you're actually a little bit stronger than most of the things around you, so I, I usually like to try to save my lower value or level creatures to reset cooldowns. Um, and at the beginning of the game, I tend to like to try to find a level 2 creature to fight. So here we've got a good one. It's a giant spider living underwater, of course, like most giant spiders do. Uh, and this one is level 2. And I feel confident that I can fight this. They don't typically have... You'll, you'll learn this as you play the game, uh, what monsters have certain kinds of cards. Giant spiders tend to have a web card that, uh, and I'm gonna get away from this, uh, tutorial stuff that, because it's my first playthrough under this profile, they have a web card that takes away your, your action, so it can actually kill my, being able to play a green card per turn, and it also takes away one of my cards on my turn. Um, when you start a combat with a creature, you actually usually get first, uh, attack, so I will play my slice to draw another card. And I draw, I draw a pretty good one. Uh, that did the one damage to the spider. You can notice it up here. You can also notice exactly how many cards he's got, how many, uh, how many action points he has. I think you can actually click on it, and it will tell you some cool facts about this spider. And I will play my two attack cards. If you'll notice, the attack one does one damage, and then this will do it actually two damage because it does one plus one for every action card I have in play, and I have one slice in play. So this one will take him down to three. And when you're done with your turn and can't do anything else, you just click your hourglass, and it gives him his turn. He played a card called Steam. What it does is made me poisoned. Poison is something that sticks around. Uh, it gave me a poison too, and then, it, and then he, when he passed the turn to me, I took two damage, and then that poison counter of two will decrement by one and go to one. Uh, and next turn, at the beginning of my turn, I'll take one damage. So if you get, if you poison four something, you actually do four, then three, then two. So poison can be really powerful. Um, but you've got to stick around a lot of turns to let it deal all that damage, so it can kind of be hard to, to deal sometimes. So this turn I will play my slice and attack one and attack two and kill the spider. And yay. And we gained six gold and we gained a level. When you gain a level, you get to choose a um, bonus. Uh, uh, 
uh, it always gives you two choices of what to choose. Um, in this case, I can upgrade two cards from my deck, or I can gain two mana. In the case of a thief, I don't typically use a lot of spells. This, when it says gain two mana, this is two base mana uh, that I'll have at the beginning for every combat. So it's not just two mana, and when I spend the mana, it's gone. Uh, every combat, I'll, I'll, I have that recurring two mana at the beginning uh, to start with. So it's if you've got a lot of spells, it's nice to get a high base mana so that you can cast a, uh, a lot right out of your opening hand. With a thief, though, spells are not quite as important, so upgrading two cards from my deck is probably better. I almost wish I'd have picked up that that storm slash now because that would have been a better card to upgrade but in the in this case i'll upgrade to attack twos and what that will do is turn two of those attack twos into attack threes so that added uh, two extra damage to my deck and didn't add any cards which is usually a pretty good thing all right so exploring the level one of the dungeon for now and i see another level two spider here and i'll go this way and see what we got it looks like I'm stuck, so I, I have to fight either the Piranha, the level 2 spider now, or I've got to start popping these health things. And level 2 spider is okay. It takes 4 points for me to upgrade, or to level up to level 3, so this will get me halfway there. So I'll go ahead and fight another level 2 spider. He stung me again, and because I have that attack 3 card now, it easier to kill him so I gained another level he gained a little bit or I gained an or I, I killed another creature also when you gain a level you get a little bit of health as well so uh, now you know instead of 15 my health is my max health is at 18 but if you'll notice during that that uh, fight I took two damage it did not heal that back you heal up to max on every level up or if I pop one of these heal heal stations here. And it looks like I'm going to have to hit one. That one's a good one to hit. Alright, here's a shop. I like shops. We'll see what's inside. You uh, just go into that area and then click over here and into this uh, enter the shop here. And it'll show you shops always have three things you can buy. Uh, this one has a, a strike card. Um, these are uh, strong cards deals five damage and it can also it's a multi-level card so you can have a strike two and a strike three and I don't know if they're strike four or whatever but uh, if you'll notice this one costs two action points to play I actually only have one action point right now uh, so I'm, I'm, uh, I cannot play this card at all but if I could I could use play this one card for two action points and do a lot of damage and actually I think that's one of the typical thief deck types is you can have a deck with like strike four and um, other cards that can copy that for a lot cheaper in action points and do a lot of damage and then uh, that, those are the only cards in your deck and you draw all those cards over and over so you do a lot of damage every turn. Um, so so far, I'm not sure which way my deck is going to go, so maybe that will be an option. This is a Corrosive Slash. It's just like the Storm Slash earlier that we saw, except this one does Earth Damage, the deal to Earth Damage. All the Elemental ones, um, uh, the Corrosive Slash 1 deals 2 Earth Damage, the Corrosive Slash 2 deals 4 Earth Damage, they increment by 2, two points. Lastly here, uh, if you'll notice, we have a brown bordered card called a Great Bow. Uh, this one is an equipment, a brown bordered card is an equipment card. When you play an equipment card out of your hand, it actually stays on, your, on the side in your combat and does not go back into your deck and is always active uh, from that point on unless something else happens. Uh, this particular one deals one physical damage for every, every time I play an action card. So this is actually, because this is here, um, and of course it costs 40 gold, I can't buy it now, but because this is here, it kind of makes me want to veer toward having a lot of action cards in my deck so that I can buy this card 
to possibly uh, have the big combo of playing the action cards and dealing the damage with the great bow. But really, it's the the dungeon and what you find that kind of dictates what direction your your uh, your um, deck takes. Here's another shop, so let's look in it. Got a backstab here. Got a ward. If you'll notice, this is a purple card. This is a spell card. Costs two mana to cast this spell, um, and it, when you cast it, it prevents the next eight damage that would be dealt to you. It kind of puts up a little temporary shield. This is a great card if you're a wizard or a priest or whatever, but um, as a thief, I, I just don't think I'll ever have the mana for it. This is um, a firebomb card. It deals five fire damage. Um, and these, there's a couple of these cards too, healing potion, firebomb. These are interesting in that, you know, it deals that elemental damage, but once you play it, it's gone from your game. So it's a one-time use kind of thing. Um, it's probably not something I'm going to want to waste 10 gold on, to be honest. I kind of want to save for that great bow. Uh, looks like we're going to kind of be screwed by the game here because it's got this Akami Stormcaller here. It's a level 4 creature, an elite level 4 creature, which means it's a little tougher than a level 4. It's kind of blocking my way, so hopefully there's a way around it up here because if not, the, this is going to be a really short dungeon for us. So we have to fight the level 1 piranha here. And he was easy enough. And let's see what we got. Got another shop here. Alright, this shop has a frost slash, which is deals water damage. Just like the other elementals. Has a slice. <laughs> uh, I have two of those in my deck as well. Um... Probably don't, might want to add that to my deck. Might not. Depends on what else I find. And then it also has... Uh, yeah, for 10, ex 10 gold, I can buy 3 experience points. Which would actually gain me a level. Um, I actually tend not to like to do that, though. Because I don't like to... Spend money on what I can just earn from killing things. This is a lemonade stand. These blue house-looking things here. With a little strawberry in it. Um, these are great because... You know, the, these give you an option. You can pick um, either adding to your max health, adding to your mana, or you can add three experience points. The first time you find one of these, uh, your first pick is always free. So I get three health, one mana, or three experience points for free. Uh, and after that, I can buy extra options as I, I want as well. So I can buy three more health. Uh, and then even three more health after that, and I can keep going on and on uh, as long as I can keep paying for it. And the price will get higher and higher. And there's a few buildings that act like this. So for now, because I'm a thief and don't really care about mana and I don't really need experience right now, I will take this free health. Next three health would cost um, five gold. Uh, and I think I'll actually go ahead and buy one more health. The next one would cost 20 gold. And it goes up even higher and higher after that. So I have 15 gold and I found another shop here. So let me look in it. Wow, this is interesting. Okay, so I have a hamstring card here. This one, uh, I haven't really... I don't know if this is good in Thief or not. Uh, I've actually never tried it. I've played it in a couple Warrior decks before. But um, this one, you're... Your opponent, if you're playing an opponent that has green cards in their hand and you play this card, they have to discard all their green cards. So if, if you're playing an opponent that relies on green cards, this one is great. In addition to that, it also deals three physical damage to them. So And that's cost one action point. Uh, Kick is another um, card that might be good. I'm not, I don't know if I can really make it work. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe it is better than I thought. But uh, this one just deals one damage, and your opponent discards a card at random. So this one's like a a weaker hamstring, and then it only discards one card. But it can be any kind of card, an attack card, or a spell card, whatever. And it only deals one damage. And lastly here is you can actually buy an extra action that costs 30 gold. And I don't have 30 gold right now, so I can't really, I guess, show any close up of that but 
I would buy this if I if I had if I had the money for it right now. So I'll fight this piranha now. It's a level three piranha. It will level me up. So let's see what we got. It's the worst hand I can draw. Two attack, one cards. So he did a shark bite, which weakens me a little bit. And he did an attack one. Now play a slice, and of course. With my slice, I draw another slice, and I have no more action points, so that slice will actually sit in my hand and not be used, and I do a backstab. But now I can play it. If you don't want a card, you can always discard it, but um, it's better for me to hold that card and use it the next turn, because it's a free draw and a free action. And I drew my two good attack three cards, so. This one I didn't find any gold from, but I did find a treasure from it. And this is interesting. My I gain a power, a special power, and this thief special power is actually a pretty good one. Um, when I activate it, it makes me immune for one turn from all damage. Um, and the cooldown on it is two fights. So uh, if um, if I'm t in a tough fight with a monster and I maybe need one more turn to kill it, uh, I can I can pop this this combat ability and it will uh, give me uh, an extra turn to live. My bonus here, I've got two choices. I can choose an action um, per round, or I can delete a card from my deck, and these are both really good. Things. If I deleted a card, it would be one of these attack one cards. But for now, I think I will take the extra action. And let's see what we got here. Got another shop. A lot of shops here. This is a good card here, Circle. Uh, when you play this card, it costs one action. Draw a card and gain one action point. So, when you play it, it replaces itself, and it replaces the action that you paid to play it. In addition to that, it also, at the end of your turn, you get to draw another card, and you get an extra action as well. So, the next turn, you have an extra action and an extra card. So, when I get 25 gold, I will be buying this card. because um, Any card that replaces itself and pays you back the action for it, I always add to my deck because I feel like it's a free draw if you ever pick it up. It, it does whatever it does and you're, you're still going. The other new card here is one of these mana cards and again these are one of these multi-level cards that you can level up. This one gains six mana when you play it. Now these, this is unlike the base mana. This is while you're fighting a monster you can add more mana to your, your uh, uh, levels. By playing this card, but as a thief, it's not something I'm interested in. Uh, and my fine treasure is is available again, so let's go ahead and do that. This is a bandage card. When I play that, I gain three health. It's an action, so I'm probably not gonna pick that up right now. I need to remind myself what was in here. It's that storm slash, right? I'll, I think I'll pick that up. Because I think that's the only chance I have. Looks like I'm going to have to fight this. Which is a level higher and elite. So it could be the end of my run right here, right, right now. Let's see what we got. So I'll play a slice, an attack, and a storm slash. And slice, attack one, attack three. to me that time. Attack one, attack one. And if he doesn't kill me this time, then I should get him. Alright. That was a little worrying having to fight that. But now I'm now I'm definitely worried because I'm at four health. And I have to fight a level three ooze. So of course I'm gonna hit these heal stations. now. I think I'll go back here and pick up my that circle and add it to my deck and then let's
let's see what we got. So this is an ooze. They, uh, they kind of have a, they heal themselves a little bit. And then they have a card called Digest where they eat my card and take it out of the game. So we don't want that to happen to like the attack threes. If, if he eats a card or my backstab, which he just ate, um, those are the cards we don't. It doesn't take it out of the game, it takes it out of my deck for this combat. So I've lost that backstab for the rest of the combat. We don't like losing the cards that but he was easily disposed of with a slice and a couple of attack cards there. Alright, so I've hit level 4 now. And now I draw an extra card per turn, so I'll start each turn with three now, which is huge. Any extra cards you have every turn is, is a great ability. And then I get a bonus. These are two good bonuses. Uh, five health, which health is always a good bonus to take. Um, and then upgrade two cards in my deck. And I actually think I'm probably going to take that one because I have that Storm Slash, which is not maxed out. So put one of these attack threes to attack four. And oh, that's going to be a tough... This is the boss. Um, he's a genie. They're... Well, all the bosses for every level are always tough to fight. But genies uh, have cards that... I think it's called three wishes. And you get to pick... Basically, you pick your poison. Um, it adds curses to your deck, which are cards that do nothing, or you have to pick that the genie keeps healing himself, and and so on. And when when he, when we fight him, you'll find out why. Look, I've uh, found in a treasure chest here a healing potion. Uh, this is again like that fire bomb. It costs one action to play, and you completely heal. And when you play it, it's, or uh, once you use it, it's gone forever. I actually think I will add this to my deck, because it might come in handy against this genie uh, toward the end. I only have 10 gold here, so let me look behind the genie, see if there's anything. No. Oh well. It looks like I gotta fight this genie. So let's see what we got here. Let's see what he is. He will give me three wishes, and I'll like it. Well, this game just lies. So, this healing potion, I'm already at full health right now. I will not be using that this turn. I'll attack one and storm slash. So, let's see what we got. Alright, so he played his three wishes card, so I get to choose here. I either lose a card for the fight, so I'll, I'll have each turn, I'll only have two cards in my hand. He'll hit hill 10, or I gain four curses, which are cards when I draw them help me in no way at all. And they're added to my deck so they'll keep being shuffled in. Uh, and if you add a lot of curses to your deck, you kind of get to a point where you can't do anything anymore. Because I've only done 7 damage to him right now, I think I'll let him heal. And then he does an attack. And then let's do a circle and a couple slices. That was a really good draw, because I pulled the backstab, which will do 4 damage. And he did a ward, which now he's basically healed 8 on me with this temporary shield he has. And still not going to use the healing potion at this point. I can give him an extra card. I can lose one action. I have, I think it's two actions I have, so I would still be able to play one thing per turn. Or I could gain four card uh, curses to my deck. I think I'll give him an extra card per turn. Now he'll have four cards, but I do have enough to kill him. So we've cleared the first level. Ah, and uh, I gained a level, so I get to choose a bonus. Uh, as you can see with my deck so far, I'm going for that lots of action cards. 
this is the strike three. That's the, the it takes four actions to play it. I can't. I only have two actions. I cannot play it. But this card is awesome. Uh, when you play it, you gain three actions and you draw a card. So it's one that replaces itself. And like I said, I almost always take those no matter what deck I play. So I'll go up there and I'll get a great that great bow. I think was. No, where was that bow? Here. Alright, I've got everything I need off this level. It was in this chest. Advantage. No, I don't think I want to add that to my deck. It doesn't really add anything. It doesn't replace its action or itself. Those are cards I tend to be very careful about adding to my deck. So I will hit the stairs and hit seven, level two of the dungeon. When you gain a, when you go down a dungeon level, you get to choose a talent. Um, a lot of different choices for the thief here to start with. You've got rich, which gives you 30 gold, um, to with which to buy things or buy the uh, extra action here. Uh, this is an equipment slot. What this is, is you can choose, uh, for every one of these you have, you can choose an equipment card that you have in your deck that starts the game in play. So these can be really, these are really powerful if you have equipment. Here is um, health. You, uh, always another powerful thing. And then uh, I have mana base mana here and then training training um, when I choose it I can choose any of my cards that I have and I can up them a level so the only card I would be able to up levels would be the attack threes or the attack ones here so it's not gonna be training uh, because I have this great bow it'll be nice to have that out and play always so I'll use the I'll use the uh, or I'll take the equipment Oh, that's not good. So, sometimes, starting in level 2 always, it seems, or at least I've, it's never hit me in level 1 of the dungeon before. Sometimes in level 2, when you walk around, you can get ambushed by different types of creatures. And in my case, I just got ambushed by a ghost, which is really bad because ghosts are immune to physical damage or they're not immune but uh, resistant to physical damage so in this case half everything I do does half so and that is rounded down so my attack ones will actually do zero my attack twos will do one attack threes will do one attack fours would do two uh, I do have that storm slash in my deck, so I'm not completely helpless against this thing. So uh, hopefully we can do that. Also, this creature drains two maximum health each turn, so my max health will go down by two every turn. So the longer this combat lasts, the more dangerous it becomes for me. So let's see what we got. Unfortunately, my Great Bow deals one damage for every action card I play. That's completely useless as well against a ghost. Because he is immune. And then the attack ones are useless. So that was a brilliant turn I had here. Could be dead. Slice. Attack four. And then slash. Basically I need to find all my... Or I need to cycle through my deck as fast as possible to keep getting that slash over and over. That storm slash. There it is again. And I don't want to play the healing potion yet. Though I'm at 9, so it might have been... Actually, we're in a, a tough spot here because... I'm at one hit point, but he played a hide card, which the 
first two cards I play this turn are going to have zero effect. Well, I do happen to have two attack ones, so I'll go away. I need to draw something really good here. That actually might qualify. I think it might be time to use this. So I heal back up, and then I do two damage with this. And then hopefully I draw my Storm Slash. I got two chances with it with the Alacrity. Oh, shoot. I did not... Sometimes I do this when I play too fast. I did not even check. But he had to hide again. So the first card I played had no effect. So I actually probably should have played like the attack card. So let's try a circle. Slice does no good. The backstab will though. It does one and then this will do two. So we just barely survive. We had to use our healing potion to do it. And my cooldown on my, my main ability is, is available now. So I'll try to find a treasure. This is another equipment card. It's a pretty good one too. Uh, at the beginning of my turn I deal three damage to my opponent if this one's out. I'll actually add this to my deck. I think, I think that could be something good. This is a healing pool. When you go to it the very first time, you can heal completely up for free from wherever you are. And then after that, every point you heal costs one gold. Um, I'm actually going to save that for a time that I need it more. Hopefully I can find something a little weaker to fight. These rice can be very dangerous. They are also immune to physical damage. This is a Medusa. They tend to take cards out of my hand and give me cursed cards in their place. So they, they can be tough ones to fight too. Here, here is a uh, shop. So let's see what's in it. Some good stuff. The jab is great. Uh, it, it's one of those cards that does something, draws a card, and gives you the action back that, so it completely replaces itself. It does something and replaces itself. Uh, piercing Stab can be good. Um, uh, it replaces itself. It does take your action away, but uh, it modifies the next card you play to do piercing damage, which goes past armor, so if they have a ward up, or if they have resilience or something, it can it can still do that damage regardless of, of any anything the uh, the creature has up. And then a blizzard is a spell which is not conducive to what we're going for here. Here's a thief. A level six would be a tough one to fight. Level seven mage is definitely not going to happen. Uh, level six wraith. This is an altar. These are interesting as well, and it's unfortunate I haven't, uh, in this profile, I haven't prayed to any of the altars yet. So I actually, this one I believe, all the creatures are weaker, but I start every combat poisoned. And normally I don't pick this altar. I don't if we if I see this altar I usually don't use it. But there's an achievement uh, associated with finding all six of the altars. So I have to do them all at least once. In the future, if I come to this alt this particular altar again, this green altar, it will actually tell me a faint memory remembers that this is what this altar does. But the first time you hit them, it, you, you have no idea until you invoke them one time. So I'll go ahead and do it. And yeah, I did remember this one right. My em enemies will have 15% lower health, but every start fight I start poisoned three. And again, remember the poison counter goes down by one. So I'll take six total damage if the, if the turns last at least three, or if the combats last at least three turns. Oh, I'll get into the crazy old man here in a minute and what it tells me. It basically tells me the final boss on this level is a lich. Uh, we've got another alacrity here, another, another jab. I need some money though. Level 6 thief. This is a 
level 7 elite demon. I actually do not see a good thing to fight here. I guess this level 5 Medusa is about the best thing we've got. So hopefully we can... So he plays a stone 1, it says select a card to discard. When I do that, it will add a curse to my deck as well. I'll add discard a slice now. I'll add this Dancing Scimitar, and if you'll notice, like I said, it's an equipment card, so it goes to the side here, and it then will always be active from then on. Looks like I might have this fight. Nope. Guess not. <laughs> well, that's... There you have it. So, there's the first game in this, uh, this series. Uh, these gazes can kind of hurt. Your opponent takes five damage for every curse in their hand. So because I drew one curse, it, it hurt. So once you die, uh, you just click your little skull here, and it will take you to this screen. And actually, later we'll give you an another option, which we'll get into at that point. But this tells you how many points you get. I get 50 for clearing the floor. I killed 8 total monsters in that fight, so I get 64 total points. It also tell me if I've unlocked anything uh, via... Uh, well, actually, this, this section tells me what I've unlocked so far in the game. And then here at the bottom, this is what I've unlocked this time. So, for this particular game, I died once, obviously, right here at the end. So, I'll gain access to a talent on the first floor. So. You noticed when we went from floor 1 to floor 2, we got to pick a talent uh, between floors. We actually get a choice at the beginning of the game from now on as well. So the very first, right after the first game you play, that one always uh, becomes the case. Uh, I defeated a genie, so I'll gain access to this Muhammad card if I uh, ever find it in a dungeon. Uh, we can go over that card when it comes up later. Uh, and then I prayed in an altar, so I gain access to a new type of talent, the Desperate Talent. And I reach the second floor, so my characters will gain one additional health every time they level up. Which will be handy, because that might have kept me alive from that Medusa. Alright, so there was the first, uh, the first game. Uh, next time we'll probably play a another game or two of Thief, uh, just see what, you know, what we can do and how far we can get. Uh, obviously next games will be a lot faster because we won't have to go into all the talents and everything again. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you next time. Thanks.